What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahoney here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. Going to be showing off the Oceana International Championship winning list here. Zapdos Jirachi, my favorite deck right now. I think this deck is very, very strong. I knew it was strong heading into the new team up format, and I'm really excited that my favorite Pokemon and some of my favorite cards, a skateboard, Zapdos, were able to take a huge championship right off rip there at the hands of Isaiah Williams. So awesome, awesome finish there. We had Zapdos, Jirachi versus Zorark in the final. Zorark also a force to be reckoned with right now and players are sure to be looking at how to topple these strategies heading into the Collinsville Regional Championships here. It looks like I am playing against some sort of Zorark Probably Ultra Beast deck. I saw Beast Ring there. So maybe Zorark Buzzwool or maybe Zorark uh, some sort of Beast Box or something like that. I'm not exactly sure, but probably Zorark Buzzwool if I had to guess. Yes, I will take my mulligan. What is strong about this deck is just the raw consistency of it. We play a whole bunch of Jirachis in here. The Absol is very good. That Dark Ambition ability. Being able to slow down your opponent's strategy as well, especially in the mirror, but also very good for the Malamar matchup. So we're just going to be able to spam a bunch of nest balls here. This is pretty much the dream starting hand. Everything that you could possibly want. We will grab a couple copies of Jirachi, a couple copies of Zapdos, and be good to go here. We could grab ourselves and a Ranguru, but to be honest, it's fine. I think we are cool just getting rolling here. And I will also escape rope one of my Jirachis into the active position. We play six switch cards in this list, which is something that is really uh, just a high count of switch cards. It's something that I was not expecting. Coming from the Zapdos list, I already thought that three switch and one escape rope was an awful lot. So we're going to like, take a look here. Uh, I think I want to go for a Guzma in this hand. A Guzma in this hand would be very good. And then I have a draw supporter for next turn. So I like that. Guzma will allow me to just bring up whatever I want on my opponent's side of the field. And then we can go ahead and pass. I don't really want to drop my stadium yet. But we will drop one more Zapdos just in case my opponent does decide to let loose me or something like that. You never know. But with six switch cards, we do have uh, kind of ultimate consistency as far as getting Jirachi into the active position for that Stellar Wish. We also have a ton of outs to play around and opposing Absol if they are trying to hamper your strategy in any way by making your Jirachi's retreat cost one more. Now it looks like unfortunately my opponent is starting off with a turn one Mallow with a Zerua active. So this is not quite going to cut it. I should be able to take advantage of my opponent failing to set up here and kind of just run them off the board pretty quickly. Now, a lot of decks are attempting to play Muck in order to slow down the Zapdos strategy. I think that is probably one of the best options available for decks, right, is the Alolan Muck. Because as you can see here, being able to just pull whatever you want off the top five cards of the deck on Guzma turns, you get to do it twice, right? If I had another Jirachi in play, I could do it a third time. It's just absolute insanity. And if there's not an Absol in play or something like that to slow me down, I'm just going to run through my opponent's uh, deck here. So we'll just take out this Cosmog, no problem, and then carry on. I mean, my opponent does have a Zerua left there, so maybe they will be able to evolve into Zorak this next turn. I'm not terribly concerned about it. I doubt that they're going to be getting a full bench that they need in order to knock out my uh, knock out my Zapdos here, even though they did Mallow. So they are going to have I know their deck stacked. I'm still feeling pretty confident that we are going to be able to withstand this uh, this blow here. I do still have Escape Rope in my hand, meaning that I could bring up one of my opponent's benched Pokemon. And as I had said, yes, it looks like it is a Zorark Beast Box Metal deck that we're playing against, maybe with some Solgaleos featured within it. 
But what Zapdos does best is that it capitalizes on any sort of inconsistencies in your opponent's deck. Yes, you are only dealing 80, 110, maybe 140 damage a turn, uh, but that adds up, especially when you can kind of pinpoint wherever you want to take your knockout each and every turn. So I think with this hand, I just go in. I mean, I would like to find a switch. The escape rope could bring up this Celestilo, which is not exactly what I'm looking for, but that's fine. So maybe I hit a Guzma off of this escape rope, and then I can pull up the Cosmog again or something like that. But it looks like my opponent's just going to give me the Cosmog. They are trying to hold on to that Celestilo, so I don't really mind at all. We'll grab Electro Power here and go up and take care of this Cosmog. I can play my Shrine of Punishment as well, attach another Lightning Energy, and kind of prepare myself for an eventual Tapu Koko GX. Tapu Koko is our heavy hitter in this deck. And you might say, heavy hitter, he only does like 130 damage with Sky High Claws. But when you combine Sky High Claws with Choice Band, Electro Power, can easily hit up 190, 210 damage. Also, uh, that Tapu Thunder GX, if your opponent ever puts three, four, five energy in play, Tapu Thunder GX can easily take big one-hit KOs to finish the game off. So in this version of the deck, you really do like to drop your lightning energy kind of intermittently throughout the match. We're only playing eight copies of lightning in this deck and one energy lotto. But as you can see, the deck is aggressive enough that you can kind of just use those eight energy effectively as long as you find them early. We're not playing any copies of Volkner in this deck, right? There's no Volkner to find your lightning energy for you. Just draw supporters and the list seems to be working out very well. Another surprising thing I find about this list is that we're playing three copies of Professor Kakui and only two copies of Choice Band. Now, I find that interesting because Choice Band is just another plus 30 card that you can play to buff your Zapdos' Thunderous Assault damage output. And I think the difference between dealing 110 and 80 damage is very significant, especially when you're trying to two-hit KO bigger tag team Pokemon GXs. You want to be dealing 110 damage every swing with Thunderous Assault. Now, of course, we do have Electro Power, but only two copies of Choice Band is a very interesting choice uh, on the part of the uh, DDG team and Isaiah Williams, who all played this deck. The Kakuis are interesting to me because they don't actually fix your math when you're trying to one-hit KO an opposing Zapdos as well. It only brings Thunderous Assault's damage output from base 80 to 100. So you're not going to be one-hit KOing Zapdoses with the Kakui. I feel like if I was one-hit KOing Zapdoses with Kakui, then maybe I could justify it, but it's, uh, you know, it's definitely interesting. And I guess it kind of does take the place of the choice bands there while giving you some auxiliary draw options as well. So my opponent's going to counter the Shrine. We've got one Electro Power in our hand here. I think that, to be honest, I'm just going to start Stellar Wishing, see what I can find. I can Kakui. I got an Electro Power. Let's just go in here, see if we can't grab ourselves another... Um, I was going to say grab ourselves another Electro Power or something. I got a couple copies of Switch here. I don't think that that matters all too much, but it's all good. And I can retreat and try to Jirachi again. I know I've got Switch, so we're just kind of thinning the deck out here to see what we get. We got an Energy Lotto, an Escape Rope, and a Guzma. The Guzma is very good. I can just knock out something on my opponent's bench over there. I think that I probably want to be targeting down another Cosmog. I mean, I can't quite knock out the Tapu Lele, so we are short on that. Escape Rope could force something up. I think Guzma's probably just my best bet. It's all good. And then I can Rescue Stretcher, bring a Zapdos back. I guess, to be honest, I'll probably just hit into the and we can counter that. What is this? Mount Coronet? Yeah, we'll, we'll just counter that. 
and attack for free with my Zapdos. That's fine. I'm not going to waste an Electro Power, but I can Kakui to grab a couple more cards here. Uh, I think that I'm just going to sit on this hand and use my Thunderous Assault for 100 here for free. Um, I guess, actually, now that I have my Tapu Koko GX, I could Sky High Claws, right? We're dealing 130, 60, 90. Uh, 30, 60, 90, that's not quite enough. I would be 10 short, actually, with Sky High Claws. Oh, wait, no, with Kakui. Yeah, 30, 50. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, let's do it. Yeah, that's fine. Sure. Uh, yep, we're going to take both these, and we're just going to one-hit KO this Zorark here with our Tapu Koko GX double electro power, and I guess we're seeing the value of that Professor Kikui there getting us all the cards we need for a crazy Sky High Claws one-hit KO here on the Zorark GX. 210 damage would have KO'd it, even if it was clean, going down to two prizes now. And I don't think that my opponent is going to be able to respond to this Tapu Koko. I take them off their Beast Ring turn, so that is not going to be an option. They may just have to promote this Sogalio here and Radiant Star, which is too slow of a strategy to keep up with the aggression of this uh, really, really hyper-aggressive Lightning deck I got over here. This next turn, uh, since my opponent did not disrupt my hand at all, we've got Guzma. We can throw that Jirachi with the escape board into the active position. All I need is one more damage buff, and we could take out that Tapu Lele GX with Sky High Claws. 130, 160, and I could do 190 damage to it if I just find a Choice Band or an Electro Power off of this. So I'm going to go for it here, just bring up the Lele and see what we can find with that Stellar Wish, do we get it? Now we got an Escape Rope, that's fine. And my Thunder Mountain is still active here. So I have Guzmud, I can Rope. I don't want to Rope, so we'll probably just go in and swing with a Zapdos here for not enough. And then the following turn, if my opponent does not heal this Tapu Lele. We've just got Guzma for game, and that will be it. We were able to defeat this Zorark metal deck here. Uh, very interesting looking list with Solgaleos, Beast Rings, Mount Coronets, and so on and so forth. One of, uh, like I said previously, one of my major concerns about playing Zapdos is just the uh, the muck. Alola muck can really shut this strategy down while being very difficult to combat in return, right? I mean, Alola muck having 120 hit points is just outside of kind of convenient range for your Zapdos. With an Electro Power, you're dealing 110. You never really want to waste two Electro Power KOing a non-GX Pokemon. It's pretty rough out here. I did like what I saw from, uh, um, what was it, from either uh, what, Philip Schultz, was it Philip Schultz? Uh, playing the Beast Box version, Philip or Robin Schultz, one of the Schultz. Uh, maybe they both played it, I don't know. But the Beast Box version of Zapdos I thought was really neat, playing the Zebstrika, right? Because Zebstrika, we're gonna be able to bring this guy up. Uh, allows you to draw even under the Alolan Muck, and we've got Electro Power, so we're dealing tons of damage here, totally fine. And Sky High Claws here for knockout. Good stuff, and that is going to be it. GG's to my opponent. Zapdos getting in there, doing exactly what it does best, and just shutting down your opponent's strategy by taking quick and efficient knockouts. I did like that. Uh, the Zebstrika addition, though, to the deck, that allows you to continue drawing lots of cards, even under Alola Mucklock. Another thing that I really like about uh, the these lists that I'm seeing here is that they play a high supporter counts and not really a lot of Vulcaners. My early Zapdos lists were playing a ton of Vulcaner, like four copies of Vulcaner, which is really strong in some ways. But then when you play against a Lola Muck, you find that the Volkners actually are horrible because your opponent has locked you out of your Stellar Wish ability 
Looks like we are playing against Venusaur now. This is uh, definitely a concerning matchup here, depending on how things go. We only got three copies of Stadium cards in our deck, so we do have to use those wisely to counter my opponent's stadiums and then try to finish this dude off with a big Tapu Thunder GX. That is going to be the strategy. So. I'll get double Jirachi here so that I can Stellar Wish, retreat, and Stellar Wish again on turn one, giving me the most amount of, you know, outs to drawing an early supporter here. I'll thin my deck one more time with an escape board grab off Stellar Wish. And this is what is so good about the deck. Nothing can really stop you if you go first from getting this early. I think we'll grab... Escape Rope could be better than Guzma because, eh, well, you know, we'll grab Guzma. We'll still be able to Stellar Wish twice off of Guzma next turn. I don't think I necessarily attach my Lightning yet in case my opponent, I guess I shouldn't attach that Escape Board either, but my opponent might judge me, so you don't actually know. And I'll just kind of throw a lot of this down just in case because I do know that the Venusaur deck does play a healthy number of judge. But like I said there, there's nothing that can really stop you from doing multiple stellar wishes on your first turn of the game, just drawing a ton of cards out of your deck. And I love the lists that play four copies of Lily, because Lily is just your strongest turn one supporter in this deck. Being able to go up to a hand of like eight cards while also doing the whole stellar wish thing is just completely phenomenal. So let's uh start off with another Stellar Wish here. We've got another Guzma, another Switch, another Electro Power. That's cool. We'll just grab Switch. It's fine. I already got Guzma in my hand. And then we will retreat into this Jirachi, do it again. And then I get to probably Escape Rope. So I guess I like the Lily here because I get to keep the Guzma, the Switch, and the energies in my hand. And we're not going to Guzma this turn since I can just use the escape rope to take a prize. So we'll escape rope one of these Tricos out. Looks like my opponent is trying to account for the uh, Blacephalon matchup potentially with the Sceptile line. Very cool. And then I will just Lily for three cards, get myself a little draw here. And to be honest, I'm just going to slap these dudes down since I am... Uh, let's see, slap that Zapdos down for sure. Since, like I said, my opponent probably plays a healthy number of Judge, so we'll do that. This next turn, I do have Switch to get my damaged Zapdos out of harm's way with that nice Secret Rare energy on it. Opponent's probably going to go in with a Pollen Hazard here, which puts us on the clock, right? So I'll probably get a turn one attachment most games, then they get a turn two Pollen Hazard. And then turn three, they start solar beaming your dudes. And that's when things get a little hectic, right? Because they are just dealing 150 damage every turn. And if they are able to hammer off some of your energy or keep you kind of from being able to find the Tapu Coco Prism Star, Tapu Coco GX combo with Judge, and this list only plays one copy of Ultra Ball, so it's very... Uh, you know, very possible to not find the Ultra Ball when you need it for that Tapu Thunder GX play on Tapu Coco. Happens all the time. So that's this that's the Venusaur strategy to try and shut you down that way. My opponent did find that double colorless though. It's gonna be able to go in Pollen Hazard, Burn, Confuse, and Poison my Zapdos, but fortunately I do have a switch. And you'll notice that I am not dropping that Shrine of Punishment yet. It is just not worth it because I want to be able to counter an Aether or a Life Forest or something like that when I do get uh, when I do run into one of those. Alright, so Looks like we got ourselves a Guzma turn here. I will gladly Guzma up that fella. Yeah, we're going to pick Grovile. You're up. And then I'm going to Stellar Wish at least once. I can Stellar Wish twice if I want to because I have a switch in my hand. I think I can grab the Nest Ball here. Seems fine. I could get myself the Tapu Coco just so that I have it. Though I'm not really trying to get that thing knocked out either. But it is kind of nice to have on the bench, I'll say. 
just so that you can kind of tee off and pull off that Tapu Thunder GX combo when you're ready to. So I'll say that, um, you know, if my opponent Guzmas and knocks that out, they leave two energy in play. So that's, that's fine. We'll just grab that thing. And then we are going to, uh, yeah, we'll just attach another energy. I guess they might not be playing so many hammer cards in this list with the thicker uh, septile line here. I'm also not seeing any stadium, so I don't know if it's just that they have not seen it yet or if they are not playing as many. It is a little bit risky putting the Tapu Koko Prism Star down, so probably should have just gone a little bit more conservatively, potentially with a... Um, you know, with an Orangaroo or something like that, that could have been fine. I just want to be able to pull off the Tapu Koko GX. Though putting this down does give my opponent a route to eliminate that strategy if they were like double hammer, knock out the Koko. Granted, that is like a pretty big combo, but that would uh, pretty much lose me the game, I think, if they were able to do that. Though I'm not seeing any of the Shamans that we typically see in this deck in my opponent's list. So they might not even play any healing cards. I could be just holding these resources for no reason. This could just be a Septile GX version of the deck. And I don't even know what Septile GX really does, to be honest. I'm gonna have to take another look at that because uh, it's not a card we see every day. But sure enough, here are the one-hit KOs that I was speaking of. With that solar beam dealing 150 damage to my active Zapdos, see what we can come up with in response. We do have Thunder Mountain Prism Star. We've got a couple copies of Jirachi here. We're gonna start to use Stellar Wish. See what we could do. We got a Guzma, that's good. At least one more turn of Guzma is probably what we want. So I will Guzma and KO a Grovile. And we do get to use multiple um, copies of Jirachi this turn to just pull things out of the top of my deck. The Energy Lotto is also good. I really want that. So we'll grab Energy Lotto also. And then I think I'm gonna go kind of full greed here and just retreat into the other Jirachi. And then we are going to Stellar Wish one more time, see if we can't pull anything else out of the top of the deck. Guzma Cynthia, I think. Just the escape board is good. And we just thin our deck as much as we can. Do that. We switch into, well, let's energy lotto. See if we can yank an energy off the top. There we go. So that's cool. I do like the energy lotto being out to an energy uh, that is item based. That is super good. And we're going to switch into this Zapdos here. And Thunderous Assault for knockout. We are looking for. A Tapu Coco GX. We need the Ultra Ball here in order to pull off the game winning play against this Celebi Venusaur tag team. We've got the Tapu Coco Prism Star on the bench already. Looks like this thing is finally out. Look at that. Septile GX Mock Cut does 60 damage for one. And then Leaf Cyclone, move a grass energy from this Pokemon on your bench Pokemon. And then Jungle Heal GX. Heal all damage from each of your Pokemon that has any grass energy attached to it. Alrighty then. So this appears to be the board state. But my opponent has got plenty of energy in play at this point. They've got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 300. So as long as we can find Ultra Ball, this is going to be game. But like I said previously, we do not play any copies of, Ult of uh, Volkner. So that's just going to be me trying to find it. Here, we've got a Cynthia, that's cool. I guess that I probably, I have like the switch and stuff that I need in my hand in order to make this work. Do I already have the Ultra Ball in the discard pile? I do not. So the Ultra Ball should be in my deck, theoretically, right? I think we just continue, yeah, we just continue onward and just keep looking for it. My hand is so big at this point, I don't want to just Cynthia it back in. We've got Kakui, cool. And then I feel like we just switch again and see if we can't find the, well, let's just Kakui first and see what we get. There he is, all right, GG's to my opponent. We get to Dance of the Ancients and chuck a couple lightning energies into play here. Boom. 
And then we have got a huge one hit KO on this Venusaur, shake and bake, doing exactly what we need to do. We have got the man who wants all these lightning energies, Arrow Trail, incredible ability, just being able to locate all the lightning energy you have in play to him. And then we've got that guy, we've got that guy, all of it. And a huge tap with Thunder GX for a ton of damage there. 350 plus the shrine damage, three prizes. More than enough to take care of that Venusaur Celebi Tag Team GX. So that is it. Philip Schultz regional winning Celebi Venusaur, not Celebi Venusaur, Zapdos deck, right? Taking down Celebi Venusaur and the Zorark metal deck we saw there earlier. I'll show off the list here real quick. You can also find the list in the description. But this is definitely a powerhouse of a deck to look out for at the Collinsville Regional Championships. And I think that, uh, you know, it's very good. People said that Zapdos would have a hard time keeping up with Tag Team Pokemon GX, and I think that we have seen that that is just not the case, right? A quick and effective and efficient attacker in Zapdos combined with the search power of Stellar Wish Jirachi just makes for a very, very powerful archetype that I'm excited to see what it can do heading forward into Collinsville. So thank you guys all so much for watching the video. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, ring that bell, check out the Etsy store, Patreon stuff, Full Grip Games in the description below, as well as my streams. I'm streaming every weekday now on twitch.tv slash tricky gym. So if you haven't already, please go give the channel a follow so you can stay up to date on when I'm streaming. I'm probably streaming today. So whenever this video airs, I am streaming today. I stream every week Day. So make sure to please check that out. My schedule is in the description of the Twitch channel. You can check that out. Thank you all for watching. Peace.